February of 2021 brought some exceptionally cold temperatures to the southern Great Plains. In Oklahoma, many sites around the state experienced lows of from minus 11 to minus 17 Fahrenheit air temperatures. However, the soil temperatures at those sites never really got below freezing, except for a few isolated locations out in the Panhandle, western Oklahoma, and southwest Oklahoma, and some of the drier areas of the state. As we approach spring of 2021, many people wonder, will we be seeing a lot of winter kill on Bermuda grass? Well, I've scouted some, and I'm happy to say that it is not as bad as the winter kill we saw from the 2009-2010 winter. Some of the reasons that it's probably not as bad is that our soil temperature at the two inch level did not get as cold as it did during the 2010 late winter, early spring. Soil moisture was also good. And when we saw those bitter cold temperatures in mid-February, we were in deep dormancy and we had not experienced any really warm temperatures beforehand to de-harden the Bermuda grass and other sensitive warm season species. However, we may have some localized areas of winter kill. So we want to share some tips with you for scouting of winter kill. So let's talk about some scouting techniques that are helpful to assess winter kill. So here we see a common Bermuda grass canopy. Depending on the severity of the winter, it would affect the number of internode and node segments from the top downward that were killed from the frosts and freezes. In a truly tropical area, Bermuda grass doesn't go brown in the winter. But in Oklahoma and other subtropical areas, the top nodes freeze downwards towards the soil. In a mild year, very few nodes are actually frozen down. And as you go down to the soil level, there will be some that will still be green. Here we see this Bermuda stands already in the process of greening up. One does have to be able to identify the difference between Bermuda grass and other grassy weeds. But this area we can see has shoots of Bermuda grass that are already breaking dormancy. So we know that winter kill is not really an issue at this site. However, um, if we hadn't seen these green shoots from above, what we might do is use a canopy parting technique where we part the canopy like this and look for green, red, or purple shoots down at the soil level on stolons and at the base of the vertical aerials. And depending upon the presence or absence there, we'd advance the process to looking below the soil level. So green, red, or purple shoot indicates uh, live viability, but you still have to assess broadly over the stand to know about the distribution of winter kill within the stand. So the factors that uh, influence winter kill in a warm season grass landscape. First of all, it's the grass type. St. Augustine grasses and centipede grasses are less winter hardy than zoysia grasses, Bermuda grasses, and buffalo grasses. Within the Bermuda grasses though, there's quite a bit of difference in winter tolerance, and that's also true within centipede grasses so, and uh, St. Augustine grasses. Within St. Augustine grasses, the most popular types are Texas Common and Raleigh within the state of Oklahoma. Why? Because they're the most winter hardy. The other types haven't proven them, themselves as perennials in Oklahoma in the past. But we expect to see winter kill on the north sides of shade lines with St. Augustine grass this particular year, and on the south sides, where it's exposed to full sun, we don't expect much winter kill. Now with Bermuda grass, typically the areas that winter kill worst are gonna be your areas of high traffic, or those sites that dried out, areas that are badly compacted, and those that are on the north sides of shade lines. Those are typically the sites of Bermuda grass that are weak going into winter, and also they're the colder sites during the winter itself, and they warm up the slowest in the spring. After we've conducted canopy parting and also canopy brushing to check for the presence of green, red, or purple living tissue above ground on Bermuda grass, if we haven't found live tissue, the next step is to actually pull a plug. You can do that with a cup cutter, such as what we see here, or you can do it with a shovel or a spade. And in front of me is a pulled plug and this is a Bermuda grass. And Bermuda grass, we know we've got aerial shoots, we've got stolons on top of the soil surface. And if it's a healthy Bermuda stand, we'll have live white rhizomes 
as storage organs and growth points under the soil surface. Well, it can be very difficult to just look at a plug and look at the rhizomes. So what we have to do is wash the soil from the root system and the rhizomes and look at the individual structures to check for live, white, or slightly greened tissues. Now rhizomes are underground creeping stems of Bermuda grass. They have inner node segments which serve as reserves for the nodes. At the nodes is a dormant lateral bud and also root initials that can allow it to produce new roots. So we're looking for live, white, firm rhizomes underground to signal that the Bermuda grass is still alive, even if all the aerial shoots have been killed. And so the, we look at these, and in this case, we know we're already experiencing green up. But if we hadn't experienced green up yet, and all the tissue were still brown above, we would see live white rhizomes beneath the soil surface and know that this stand was still quite alive. So one can use those very useful skills and techniques that we showed for scouting winter kill of your individual warm season lawn. But overall, what I've seen so far around the state is that we've had very little, little winter kill. Uh, it certainly is not going to be as bad on turf grasses as it was during the 2009-2010 event. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.